So the next one, we talk about the e-invoice format. So in e-invoice format, I will let you know what is the information that you need to fill in when you issue invoice to your customer. Okay, so previous guide, guide version 2.1, they mentioned there's a 51 field for you to fill in when you issue invoice. Okay, but after this, Income Tax update a great version to 2.2, they add on another four field. So you can see that previously is five, five, 51 field, now it's 55 field. Okay, so why is the requirement? Huh? Why is the information supply detail, buy detail, invoice detail? Number, product detail, service detail, payment info. So this is the uh, particular they will require to uh, key in in your system and when you issue an e-invoice to your customer. All right. So this 51 view is the one I share to you here. This is previous guide, version 2.1. The yellow, the, the yellow color box is the one optional. All right. The next one. Is the latest version update on 9 February 2024, 51 field. The yellow part is the optional. The white color is a compulsory mandatory for you to key in. All right. So I will get, uh, let you know one by one. So this is the supplier detail. Supplier detail is mean your company, uh, your company details, because your company is supplying the person uh, product or service to others. So supplier detail is your company details. So your company name, of course, all right. Team number is the company, team income tax number. If individual is the IG or something, all right. For company, CSA number, make sure you're using the new registration number, the 12 digit new registration number. Don't use the previous one, the six digit with the one, the alphabet, the one, the one is a previous uh, SSN number. Make sure you use the new SSM registration number. So. For Malaysian individual IC number, not Malaysian, password number or uh, other number, all right? SST, if your company is registered as the SST, you must key in the SST number. If no, there is book and A. Tourist test number, business email address. So business email address, email address is very important huh? because I say income test will use the email to send notification to you. So this email address can be same as your company, you know, uh, the general email address, or you can attention to specific person, like maybe you have a sales team, you have a purchase team. So maybe this is sales invoice, you key in the sales team invoice, uh, email address. The purchase, purchase team, you give them the purchase team email address for them to receive the email and check whether there's anything you want to amend or something or not. Okay, so e email does not, uh, necessary will be same, uh, can be different. Business code in the MSI code. So you need to find out what's your MSI code. So if you don't know, go to check with your tax agent, uh, go to check your SSI uh, secretary. Right. Business activity description, what is your what is your business doing? If you're doing selling or trading, you need to mention trading in what item, something like that. All right. Business address. Business contact number. So this is your company detail that you need to require to key in. All right. So this is your buyer detail, your customer details. Right. Customer detail, you need, of course, you need to put the customer full name, company name, as my SSN record. Make sure your key in is a full name, uh, not like the uh, short form like ABC, you just keep ABC. Uh. Make sure it's a full name. Uh. And the Malaysia, not Malaysia, make sure you follow the IC a passport name as stated in the IC or passport. Don't mention like Albert Tan, but the IC didn't have Albert. You put Albert Tan, follow their full name as the IC, okay? Team number, all right? SSN number, new number, IC number, passport number. Let's say you do not have their SSN number, all right? Then you key in this code, zero, 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 all right? This was the second, what's the normal condition? No, uh, they you don't have their SSN number. Okay, so this uh, this yeah, uh, like foreign supplier, foreign supplier, you don't have their in SSN number. You can key this general number. So for the team number, if a Malaysian individual, you you don't have the yeah in team number, but you the the customer only give you the C number. 
So the thing I'm not you can key the EI here, the EI and then 10. If not Malaysia, you key EI, 10, 0, 0, and 20. So 20 is for non Malaysia, 10 is for Malaysia. So buyer SST, if let's say SST register person, you take key in. Email address, save you supply email address they want to send notification. So full address, content number. So measure here. You, you want to issue invoice to your customer. You need to require all this information from their from them in order to key the, uh, uh to, to submit the invoice to the income tax. Uh. All right. So the second, the third part will be come to the invoice details. Invoice detail is here means that you need to mention this invoice is under version one or version two or version three. I think when you're if you're using the software. So software you 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 mentioned for you, but if you each using issue in one under the month in one spotter, so need to measure whether you follow which version. Uh, okay. In one start, you need to uh identify whether it's a invoice, credit note, debit note, or refund note. All right. E invoice code. E invoice code is the invoice number that you're using to track in for your internal purpose. Like normally, uh, when you issue in invoice to your customer, there's an invoice number for you to have reference. So this is an invoice number. Original invoice, this one is the IRB unit identification number. Once you submit to your income test, income test after validate, they will give you a unit identification number. So this unit identification number will be different from each, every, every invoice you have different uh, U, UID number, okay? So this number is very important. When next time you want to issue a debit note or credit note, make sure you need to refer back to this number. Invoice date and time. Right? Once you validate, they will state the date and time to validate the invoice, including the time, okay, date and time. Digital signature. So next time, no more need to, no more need to print out to get your boss to sign. Huh? So everything go to electronic signature, all right? Invoice currency code. So if you using any in currency, you need to represent what's the currency code you using, all right? Currency exchange rate stated what's the rate they are using. If let's say there's a USD, what's the conversion rate? Frequent of billing. Whether you're billing on monthly basis, annual basis, or uh, you need to mention. But this one is optional. Right? Billing period interval. Whether your normal, uh, if let's say your billing is for monthly or quarterly, so you need to measure quarterly is from which month to which month. But this one also optional. If I didn't mention optional, it's not mandatory. Uh. So come, the next one is the product services. The first one is classification. Classification is a three digit number that you is set by the income test. You need to find out your product or service that you uh, uh, charge to your customer is under which category. So this uh, classification code number, I think will be ready in the your software. When, if let's say your software is uh, invoice uh, compliant. Now if let's say you're using the My Invoice portal, of course, you need to find out by yourself. All right. D description. Description is the product or detail, the service that you build to your customer. Unit price, okay. So this three digit number later, I show you how to get this three digit number. Okay, later I'll show you. All right. Unit price, test type, service test, sale test, test rate if let's say applicable, test amount. So detail for test exemption. If let's say any exemption, you need to mention here. Exemption for test. What's the purpose? Stop total, excluding test. So all this is mandatory. And the eleven. Total including test. This is optional. Total payable amount uh, mandatory. And then optional. This one all optional. But if you want to key in, also can. Taxable amount, quantity. This one is a uh, optional amount. All right. Under the payment information, payment information is the information that you stated in the invoice in, uh, in order for your client uh, can have a reference how they're going to transfer payment to you. So, it's optional for you to fill in this payment information. But of course, if you want to make your customer convenient, I think you better, you can put your payment mode. Lah. Let's say your bank account number, 
for them to have a reference. So this is up to you whether you want to put or your leave it. All right. So the four items here, the first one is applicable applicable to those if let's say now your customer A order from you, but customer A requires you to uh, uh, shipping the product to uh, their customer B. So if let's say your, your supply to A but shipping to B, so you need to uh, fill in this information. Who is the shipping recipient name? Right, understand? Huh? The recipient is different from the uh, your customer name. So the last two is applicable to the import and export. If let's say you have import and export transaction, you need to key in the custom clearance number in the invoice. Right. So the this six is referring to the import and export also. If let's say there is any relevant tariff code, you also need to uh if let's say there's a good, normally they have a tariff code, you need to key in the tariff code. For export, if let's say you have any uh agreement, you need to go in. All right. So this is referring to the export and export, import and export. Okay, these four general TIN number is for those, let's say you are you don't know their TIN number, this is a general TIN number for you to, uh, to be key in the invoice that you're going to be uh, issued to your customer. The first one with 10 is referring to the Malaysian individual, but the, uh, the Malaysian individual only give you the IC number. So you can use 10 as the team number if let's say your customer didn't give you. Or when you issue consolidated invoice, the team number you will see is just 10. Or 20 is for buyer. Let's say your buyer, your customer is a non-Malaysian individual that only give you the password number. So you can keep 20 as the uh, team number. For export transition, also using this uh, export transition, if your customer do not have a uh, Thing number using this 20. This 30 is for non-Malaysian individual the applicable during the cell bill invoice. Okay, cell bill, I will talk to you later. This, this 30 is applicable for cell bill invoice. The 40 is the government, government thing number. Let's say you have supply good or sub perform service to government, you want to invoice them. The TIN number you can put 40 because government maybe don't they don't have a TIN number for you as a reference. So you can put 40, right? So this is the e-invoice format. You can see the top will be your company name, address, email address. So here will be your supplier detail, your company detail, TIN number, registration number, SST number. So here will be your customer details, TIN number, name, IC number, address, email address, and phone number. So this is the item that you sell to your customer. All right. So once income tax validate, the invoice will, will have, you see each invoice, right? And validation date will be set, what date they validate, and the time they validate. Okay. And last one. The e invoice that you receive, you have a QR code here. So this QR code is you can scan this QR code to check whether e invoice is valid or not valid. But if let's say you worry, worry whether this e invoice is actually valid or not valid, uh, you can go back always go back to your my invoice portal to check uh, because income tax say whatever the e invoice already issued and validated by income tax, everything will be kept in the my invoice portal. You can check back from that side. Make sure you get whether it's correct or not, valid or not valid. So here, let's say the classification. Here the classification code. Uh, in under this uh portal, you can check all the code, uh, country code, currency code, privation code, e invoice type. You can check here all the code. All right. So for classification, classification code, here is an example. 001 is for risk breastfeeding equipment. 002 is child care center. So they will be up to 999. But of course, until now, in the current uh, income test portal, they're only up to 040. 
only, only 40 codes available in the income tax portal. So I think they need time to update until 1999. So they will take some time. So I just let you know, if you want to put the classification code, you can always go to the portal and check.